Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody know that God has really been good? I mean, really been good. Really been good. May we stand by our call to worship. God, as we gather here today, this is the 21st day in year 2024. And the choir just reminded us, God, you've been good. Yes, sir. You really have been good. For surely this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Will you be seated for our prayer of invocation? God, thank you. Thank you. Because the choir just kind of reminded us that you have been good. And when I think about the goodness of Jesus, man, and just how, how I mean, not, I don't have to go way, way back. I can just go back to, let's say, December 31st, 2023. And you, you brought us all the way from 2023, December 31, to January 21, 24. A lot of people didn't make it. There's some who've made it, but they don't even know that they're in the world. There's some who are struggling with issues and, and life stuff. And, and yet, God, you allow us to be here. Wow, I passed a lady this morning, and she was pushing a grocery basket. And it looked like she had all of her earthly possessions in that one little basket. And I realized, God, that it had not been but for the grace of God. Her situation could have been mine, and mine could have been hers. If it had not been but for the grace of God. And so, God, as we gather here this morning, not for form and not for fashion, but just to say to you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Ah, thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you, God, for how you're blessing us even right now. So be in our midst, God. May the things that we say and do put a smile on your face. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as we begin our day of worship, we bring light into the sanctuary. And it's a symbol. The symbol says that Jesus is the light of the world. So we bow to the cross in reverence to the Savior who gave his life for us on it. And we'll light two candles. The candle on the right represents Jesus who comes in human form, born of a virgin named Mary, human, just like you and I. And yet the candle on the left represents Jesus who came as the only begotten Son of God. Now you got to catch this. He was fully human so that he could endure what we endure, but he was fully divine so that he could pay the penalty for our sins. Because if it had that combination then he wouldn't be just what John called the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the whole world. And what sins? All <coughs> sins. What sins? Let me say it again. All sins. Wait a minute, let me say it again because I won't decide to get it. What sins? All, All sins, right? The sins that happened before he came into the world and the sins that happened after he came into the world. All sins are covered by the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why we come, and that's why we came. Our hymn of worship this morning is not going to be on the screen. It's an old familiar hymn that says, Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get me behind, because victory today is mine. All right, the choir will lead us and we we'll invite you to stand as we join with the choir and sing. Victory is mine.
as we sung that song, I thought about perhaps the things that you want victory over. And the enemy is saying, nah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Tell him he's a liar. 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 Satan, you can't have my children. Satan, you can't have my family. Satan, you can't have my finances. Satan, you can't have my health. Satan, you can't have my job. You can't have my school. Victory is mine, says the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Will you join us for our responsive reading? It's found in the back of your hymnal, the second page 12. Page 12 in the back of your hymnal. And it'll say, Fourth Sunday morning in Epiphany. Fourth Sunday morning in Epiphany. Fourth Sunday morning in Epiphany. And you see the kids sneaking out because they're going to practice um, a step dance thing. That we're doing for our um, Black History Month. Page 12 in the back of your hymnal, fourth Sunday morning in Epiphany. And we find these words. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will dwell in the midst of the God, the wedding of the God, and the death of the Lord. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ in the power of God and in the wisdom of God, because the weakness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Together, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, that, as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the standing would you join us in reciting the apostles creed it's going to appear on the screen but it's also in your hymnal hymn number 705 the apostles creed as you've heard me say a number of times is 12 statements written by some theologians scholars who got these statements from the bible so they're biblically um instructed okay and and what they've done is they've written down this is what we believe as a follower of jesus christ we believe in the apostolic church. That means a church that's founded on the, the apostle um, directive. We also believe in Jesus Christ, his son. God came into the world. And they'll say that. They'll even say how he was born, how he died, and how he was resurrected. It even tells us part about where we believe that he's going to come back. 
and receive us unto himself. And then he said, we believe in this holy Catholic church, which refers to a universal church, a church of all believers in Jesus Christ. And then he says, and we believe in the resurrected body and life everlasting. So if that's what you believe, would you join us in reciting the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. May we notice our scripture lesson for this morning. Our scripture, you'll find it in the Bible in the pews. It's on page 806. Page 806, the Bible's in the pew. And it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. And, and in this passage of scripture, um, Paul is talking about the victory that we have in Jesus through his resurrection. And he's talking about this idea of, of all of us being transformed, okay, or being created new, made new. All right. Second Corinthians, and I'm actually going to start with verse number 16. 16 through 20, we find these words. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him, thus no longer. Verse 17. Therefore, 
if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not in putting their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Then verse number 20 says this. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And I'm going to finish with verse 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So he made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God, that we might be able to stand before God and stand in Jesus' righteousness alone. You get it? Amen. Thus ends the reading of the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Would you bow your heads? And as we go to God in prayer, I'm going to ask you to pray. Yeah, I know, a lot of times you'll say, Pastor, call somebody up to pray. I'm going to ask you to pray right where you are. Would you, would you right where you are, just talk to God? Perhaps the first thing you might want to do is acknowledge that he is God. Then the second thing you might want to do is just give him some thanks for some of the stuff he's already done. You know those things we worried about and we were fretting and we had all that anxiety and yet God worked it out. Mm. You remember those things we stayed up at night tossing and turning all night long wondering how this was going to get to that or how that was going to get to this or how we were going to make it through this or that or the other thing and yet here we are because God brought us. You may want to thank him for your family and the folks that are sitting maybe right next to you and those that love you in spite of you and those that, that love your good parts and your bad parts and those that have been there for you and will continue to be there for you. Maybe, just maybe you want to say to God, thank you. Mm. Then perhaps you want to pray for the stuff that you don't always want to tell anybody else about. Those things that I want to say to God that um, I know he hears. Those things that are in my heart that I can't say out loud because um, I don't want anybody in my business. But God, those things I lift to you. So God, as we've gathered this morning, we just say thank you. Thank you for what you've already done, and thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you, God, for the times that you brought us through, and you carried us through, and you lifted us, and you, ah, God, you made ways out of no way. You healed our bodies, and you just carried us when things got tough and dark, and when even when everybody was talking about us, and even they were counting us out. But God, you never gave up on us, and I just want to say thank you. God, we continue to pray for our children. Give them good minds to make godly choices. Pray, God, that you'll continue to protect them and provide for them. And then, God, we pray for ourselves that you will make us what we are called to be as we continue to do the things that will please you by the lives that we live. We give you thanks and we give you praise in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. So it says, Amen. Good to you. Good to you.
to the kids, let me share the announcement. Um, Camille was not here and I didn't get to tell anybody to do these, so let me do them for you, please. Um, of course, today is the day that God has made. Anybody just glad sure. to be alive? Yeah. I mean, for real. I mean, for real. Real. I mean, straight talk. Just glad to see this 21st day of 2024. Amen. Um, the announcement, of course, will be appearing on the screen. On tomorrow, not tomorrow, the 29th, we go to Eden Village. And um, we continue to ask you to pray and help us with that. Eden Village is the place where they take um, chronically homeless individuals. They interview them, and then if they pass the criteria, they can become a part of the Eden Village community. It's about 32 houses supported by a number of partners throughout the city and the county. And these individuals can stay in that home. They don't have to pay a small amount for rent, but they can stay in that home as long as they live. But the bottom line is, is that they're not just giving them a home, but we also give them wraparound services so that they'll help them to get on their feet and to stay on their feet. And so that's so critical. So we, will, we support them and we serve them dinner um, at least once a quarter. And this time our turn is going to be on next um, Monday, the 29th. Also note that um, we're collecting shoes. The Jack and Jill are collecting shoes out there in the, in the vestibule, and I'm trying to pull these up. My wife sent them to me. All right. And also you'll see we have intercessory prayer, and we do our Bible studies now. Bible studies on Wednesday mornings start at 11.30. We moved it up a half an hour. It starts at 11.30 to 12. So we invite you to be a part of that. Okay. On February the 4th, is a event that we're calling um, success. It's Jackie Bruton. Jackie Bruton is the young lady who wrote this book called The Truth About Sex, Real Stories for Teen Guys Like You. And I do this every year. And then someone asked me the other day, why do you do it every year? Why do you keep doing that? Why do you keep doing that? Well, the reason being is because the teenager who's 14 today is a different teenager than he was when he was 13. And the teenager that's 14 today will be a different teenager when he's 16. And if by chance, Mike, we get an opportunity to put some real good thoughts into their brain about why boys have sex or why they shouldn't have sex or abstain from having sex, then maybe, maybe during their teen years, they might make some really good decisions. Okay. So that's going to happen on the 5th, the 4th, and that's at 3.30. It's doing the Pro Bowl. It's doing the Pro Bowl. We'll have snacks and pizza and chicken and a whole bunch of stuff to serve. It's called the Success Playbook. And we've got some flyers in the back if you need one of those. The only requirement is that we ask the kids who come to purchase a book. To purchase a book. Now, let me tell you why I do that. I did it because I talked to Jackie, and she says, Cliff, because what I've been doing for the last umpteen years is I would just give you a book. Here, take a book, take a book. I would stop people in the street. Say, hey, you got this book? Here, take this book. And here's what she said to me. She said, when you give a person a book, chances are they may read it or they may not read it. But she says, what happens is when somebody pays for something, they pay attention. Anybody understand what I'm saying? When you pay for it, you pay attention. Like, for example, when you give a kid a bicycle and you pay for that bike, They'll leave it out in the driveway. They'll leave it in the rain. 
watch this, make them pay for it. And then what do they do with that bicycle? <laughs> they wipe it down, they bring it in the house, they, don't they? Because, okay, and so it's the same here. Now, if you can't afford the book, it's okay. It doesn't matter. We want kids to come. We want boys to come. <laughs> and even men can come. And you know, there's an opportunity where you can even view it from your home because it's virtual. You can view it from your home. But we're excited about that as well. All right. Um, okay. And the other announcements are going to run across the screen <coughs> because I can't find them right here. Okay. <laughs> kids, would you come if you're under um, 18? And I saw a bunch of them go. Right. Oh, checkup meeting. Thank you, ma'am. Checkup meeting is next. Come on, come on up, come on up. Checkup meeting is February the 3rd, and it's, we're hosting it here. And so we um, want all of our all hands on deck, everybody, ushers and people that are helping to serve and things like that. That's February the 3rd here at 10 o'clock. Good. Thank you guys for coming down. Ooh, boy. Good job. Good job. Boom. Hey, man, you're getting taller too, buddy. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Under 18? You're over 18. You're 18. Well, that's close enough. Come on. Come on. That's close enough. That was a good try, though. That was a good try. Give me something. Give me something. Give me something. Boom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, darling. All right. Good morning. How are you? Well, no, I look stupid, right? <laughs> look at you looking at me like, man, what's wrong with this guy? Listen, I like life. I love life, man. Every day that God gives me, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Because every day that God gives me is the day that I can try to do something better for him. Okay? So every day that God gives you, you just go, yes, yes, yes. How, any, okay, let's talk about it. Anybody like mornings? How many people like mornings? Kind of takes a while for you to get up. Most people like mornings. But what, what's your best time of day? You got any idea? What's your best time of day? Afternoon. Okay. You got an idea? What's your best time of day? Morning. How about yours? Morning. Morning. Afternoon. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Specific. Nine o'clock. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad we have service at 930. I mean, you're your best. You got your, what's your best time of day? Morning, how about you? Morning, morning. Mine is morning. Now watch. The person that I sleep with and snore in my face, her, her best time of day is like midnight and <laughs> 1 o'clock and stuff. And I get up early morning. I can get up at 6 o'clock so I can be at the school. And she's in the bed. <sighs> and then at 1 o'clock, she goes, hey, let's talk. What are you doing? <clears throat> you know? But everybody is different, okay? Everybody's different. But the thing that I want you to remember is that God made you, and I've said this to you before. Look at your thumb. Look at your thumb. See your fingerprint? Your fingerprint is not like anybody else's in the whole world. You've got the only one. You're somebody special. You really are. You're special to God. Okay? All right. I think we have one senior in the place. Would you stand forward, senior? And what do we do to seniors? Salute. salute. We salute you. Congratulations. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Man. Thank you, God, because some of us like morning, some of us like, like evening, some of us like afternoon, some of us like one o'clock at night. Um, but God, thank you that you made all of us different. But all of us, even though we're different, you love all of us the same. And we thank you for loving us and making us different. Now help us to do what you have made us to do in our different ways. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, now you got to help me sing. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him
thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. Um, please note that if you want your income tax statement, that you can, um, there's a sheet out in the vestibule that you can sign, and they'll be here for you this week. Um, if you want to get your income tax statements so that you can um, get a number of what you contribute to the church, there's a sign-in sheet out in the vestibule. Please make sure you stop by and put your name there. Also, we're collecting shoes. Uh, one of our students are collecting shoes, and we've got the box out there in the vestibule. Please, we got some um, new shoes or slightly used shoes that could be a blessing to someone else. Please um, bring them to the church, and she can pass those on. Um, the other thing I want to note, I just got a note that um, one of our parishioners got a 20-year award for working with the New Hanover Regional <laughs> Medical Center. Um, would you stand up? You must have started when you were like 12. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. You're in the church. I remember you're in the church. You're in the church. Congratulations, Audrey. God bless you, man. That's exciting. That's exciting. That's exciting. Go ahead. Ushers, you may take your seats. God bless you, and thank you for serving. Next Sunday, um, fourth Sunday, I believe it's the men will be ushering. Uh, men usher, fourth Sunday. Remember that, men? So we look forward to you guys um, helping us out on next Sunday. All right. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you, God, for all that you do for us. And we pray now that you will move Clifford out of the way and let the real preacher come. So that when we leave this place, God, we might go home and live better lives. Would you speak now, my Father, for thy servant hears, and he will obey. Amen. 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 From 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 to 20, I want to talk from the subject entitled, What's New in You? What's New in You? We're 21 days into 2024. I want to ask you a quick question. How are you doing with your New Year's resolutions? <laughs> I thought I'd ask. I thought I'd ask. I thought I'd ask. I mean, only 21 days. How, how are you doing? Have you, have you kept up with them? Are you still doing it? Or are you like many people that I know um, don't even make them? Because we know they're not going to last at least 21 days. <laughs> and so when I think about what's new in you, I want you to understand it's not in you, not what's new outside of you. Like, for example, we get excited because we get new clothes, new shoes, new hairstyles, new all those kinds of things that are on the outside. And we work really hard to take care of the outside. And we want to make sure that the outside looks presentable and looks good. Well, the Bible says, but man looks on the outer appearance, but God looks on the heart. He looks on the inside. And so we got to understand then that Jesus died in order to change man from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Jesus died to change us from the inside out. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5 tells us that. Because Paul, as he speaks to this church in Corinth, he says, if any man is in Christ, he becomes a new creature. Mm -hmm. If any man, underscore that word, any man, any man, any man, any man, any means all, any means everybody and general body, any, any, if any man, if any man sin, if any man is in Christ, if any man is in Christ, those who accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, <coughs> excuse me, if any man is in Christ, then they become a new creature. And listen, that's a promise from God. And because God is a man that sticks to his word, God is not like us. God is not like us. Well, I, I promise you, man, I promise I'm going to do right, I'm going to do this. I promise. I, I put my hand on the Bible. I promise. Well, no. If God said it, he's going to fulfill it. He's going to complete it. It's guaranteed. And so the Bible says, if I am in Christ, then I become a new creature. Now watch, in Christ, not in yourself, not in how good I am, 
Not in how wise I am. Not in how smart I am. Not in how good looking I am. I had a brother-in-law who used to, he, he married my sister. She was five years, six years older than I am. And she was, he was in the military from St. Louis. And he would stand in the mirror and pop his hands. And he'd look at me and say, oh, you handsome dog. Don't you ever die. Well, the handsome dog did die. <laughs> but listen, it's not, Christ says if any man is in Christ, not in himself, but if you're in Christ. Now watch. Also, not if you're into religion or into the religion of men, into the tradition, into knowing when to stand, when to sit, when to bow, how to say the Apostles' Creed, how to say give first give an honor to God, who's the head of my life. No, oh, no. Not even if you're into that. If you're into church, uh-oh, what do you mean? I'm in the church. Yeah, you, you could be, watch this, you could be in the church, but the church could not be in you. Mm-hmm. All right. and, and so what you got to understand then is that even though I know the churchy stuff, what Jesus did when he died on the cross was for us to not just know the churchy stuff, but he died in order that the church might live in us. So that when we accept Jesus as our Savior by faith, the Bible says then we become new creatures. All right. We become new creatures. New creatures in Christ. So Paul says then the old things are passed away and behold all things become new. This is the principle of regeneration. It's, it's that those who come to Christ are not only saved, but those who come to Christ are also changed. You get it? I'm not just saved. Mm-hmm. Jesus didn't just rescue me, and now I'm saved, and that's it. No, he saved me, but now he lives in me to change me. So that I become changed. So that's why I raised the question. What's new in you? That's why I raised the question. Because Jesus comes not just to save us, not just to be our Savior, and not just to rescue us, but he's come to change us. When we allow him to be the Lord of our lives, then he starts to change us. Have you been changed? Have, have, have you been changed? Whoa. I'm not going to look at the altos. <laughs> I better look at the altos. Have, have, you, have, you been, have you been changed? See, we expect those who are outside of the church, those who don't know Jesus, those who have never accepted Jesus, to not be changed. We expect them to be like they are, right? But then when we give our lives to Jesus and we become a part of the church and stuff, we expect the church folks to be changed. Mm-hmm. Right? Change. Change. We expect those who are following Jesus, as Paul says here, to become new creatures. Now watch this. And as God changes us, it doesn't mean that we become perfect. Tell your neighbor, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. <laughs> Matter of fact, hit your chest and say, yeah, I'm not perfect at all, man. I'm a, I'm a long way from being, yeah. Because, because watch, because watch, because watch. Because what Jesus does, listen, listen. He, he doesn't expect us to be perfect. He's not saying, when I change you, you'll be perfect. Because see, if he cha- when he changes us, we still make the, some of the same mistakes. Ooh. Even after I've given my life to the Lord and I've surrendered to him, I, I still make some of the same mistakes blunders. I still stumble over some of the same things. I wish I had a witness in the house. I mean, I, I still wrestle with some of the things that, that hindered me before I crossed the line. I still wrestle with some of the things that, that still bother me. I still have some of those thoughts running through my mind, and yet I know I'm saved and I'm giving my life to the Lord and I'm supposed to be a new creature. But what we understand is that not only is he changing us, but he's changed, not just changed us, but he's changing Mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Every day I die daily of the things that's in me. He's, He's changing me. 
Now, now for some, he'll change it and it's instantly. You know, I, I put down the bottle and then never touched it again. Then for some of us, we put it down and then we touched it again. You know, right. change. But it's not, it's not instantly all the time. It's not automatic. It's not like a genie. You remember, I dream a genie and, and Tony would say, genie, genie, I'm in a jam. She'd give me out of jam. And she'd go. <laughs> right? Amen. No. Jesus says, Paul says, if you become a new creature, you become changed. It means that we are being changed. Yeah. So we still make the same mistakes. We still sometimes fall. And see, stop, stop, stop looking at new believers and saying, oh, I thought you gave your life to the Lord. Oh, I thought you were saved. Oh, look at what you're doing now. No, I'm being changed. Uh, I'm being changed. So you might hear me say, be patient with me. Because God's not through with me yet. Mm. Be patient with me. Because I'm still on this journey. Be patient with me because God is still working in me. Be patient with me because he that is in me is going to do greater works than he that's in the world. Be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. All right. Be patient with me because he's still changing me. That's why you, you see Christians and we're like this. You know, we're not all of this. It's like this. Because he's gradually changing us. Um, it's not just like, oh, I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm, I'm going to straighten up and do right. I'm going to get it right together. You ever heard people say, I'm going to stop doing this, I'm going to stop doing that, and I'm getting my act together, and I, I gave my life to the Lord, I'm just so excited because I'm, I'm going to get it all done and get it right, and the next thing you know, you find yourself slipping and sliding because God is creating us to be new creatures. I had an author write this. Um, his name is um, Charles Spurgeon. He's a theologian and he talks about this passage and he, he talks about this idea of being a new creation. This is what he says. He says, my brethren, if it was more difficult in such terms as are applicable to omnipresent, omnipotent, it was more difficult, watch this, here's the part I want you to listen to. It was more difficult to create a Christian than to create a world. Yeah. It was more difficult to create a Christian than to create a world. What was there to begin with when God made the world? There was nothing. But nothing could not stand in God's way. But it was at least passive. But my brethren, in our hearts, while we have, we, but my brethren, in our hearts, while there was nothing that could help God, there was much that could and did oppose him. Our stubborn wills, our deep prejudices, our ingrained love of iniquity, all these great God opposed thee and aimed at thwarting thy design. Yes, great God, it was great to make a world, but greater to create a new creation in Jesus Christ. So watch, let me explain to you what he's saying. What he's saying is this. He said, when God created the world, it was a piece of cake. Because when he created the world, it was darkness. There was nothing to fight against it. But when God created a new Clifford, or a new Daphne, or a new Fran, or a new Brian, or a new Maltrina, or a new Audrey, or a new Karen Kathy James clan, when, when God created us to be new, watch, there was some stuff on the inside that fought against what God wanted to do. Ah, I wish I had a witness. There was some stuff in me that fought against wanting to be what God wanted me to be. There's some stuff in us that fights against it. Our stubborn will, our desires, our flesh, all that still fought against what God wanted to do. But God, being God, loved us so much that he would give his son that if I would just believe on him, not do good works, not be a good guy, not try to straighten out my own life, but if I would just believe on him and accept him and his word, yeah. that he would come and live in me right. and
And the God in me is greater than the world. The one who is in me makes a change in me so that the things I used to do, now gradually I don't want to do anymore. The places I used to go, I don't go anymore. I look at my hands and my hands look new. Look at my feet and they did too all around me started looking new why because god was on the inside working on the outside bringing a change in my life and so he changes us emmanuel gradually little by little and then we may not all the time time see it but those who sleep with us do those who know us do those who look at us and hear us and they say, well, something's different about you. Well, I don't know why, you, you know, you, you used to want to go all the time. Now you want to just kind of stay at home. There's something different about you. Somebody would have bumped into you like that and you'd have cussed them out. But there's something different about you. Oh, that person just cut you off in the line. You would have chased them down and given them the one finger wave. But there's something different about you Amen. it's Jesus living on the inside it's the Holy Ghost that changes our lives so the songwriter says but you know I know I've been changed mm. oh I know I've been changed I know I've been changed because the things that I don't do I know I've been changed the angels in heaven changed, but I know I've been changed by because the things I say, the things I walk, and where I live. I know I've been changed. And I'm not finished yet. Because God is continuing to create in me a clean heart. He's continuing to teach me how to talk. He's continuing to teach me what things to say and not to say. He's continually teaching me how to hold my tongue. He's continually teaching me when I want to go this way. He says, now Cliff, you may not really want to go that way and I'll kind of slide that way. He says, no, and then I turn around because he's changed me. He's changed. And what a wonderful change that's come over my life. He changes us. Living in this new created body, change. We receive it. It's a gift from God. Mm -hmm. To be made a new creature is a gift from God. And we live it out by faith. By faith. We, we put our faith in our shoes and we try to walk it out and we try to live it out and we sometimes get bumped back and sometimes we fall and sometimes we stumble and sometimes we make the same mistake. I wish I had a witness. Anybody here ever made the same mistake? And, just, and then you just do it over and over and then I thank God that God is patient and God is loving and God doesn't do like people would do and just strike you out but what I love about God is that he continues to love us. He loves us. So in all this, in all of this, God is working in us. And so our desire, our job then, is to just to surrender to him. All things become new. We see things differently. We walk differently. And we talk differently. And we share grace more. And we share mercy more. And we're more compassionate. And we're more loving. And we're more thoughtful. And we're more considerate. And we're more going out of the way to help others. And we're more like speaking. We don't go through that thing where they ain't speak to me. So I ain't speaking to them. No, that's, that's the old guy. That's the old guy. That's the old guy. That's the old guy. But thanks be to God, he creates in us new creatures. We become changed. 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 And made like him. The writer who wrote the hymn, I Surrender All, 
We're told that um, he wrote the hymn because he was struggling between whether he wanted to be like an evangelist or whether he wanted to go into business. And he was wrestling with that, tossing back and forth with what he should do. And then finally he um, said to himself, I know what I'll do. I'll surrender all. That's it. I'll surrender all. Now listen, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but listen, maybe, maybe, maybe you've been trying to fix it yourself. Mm. Maybe, maybe you've been saying, okay, I can, I can, I can handle this. I, I know what I need to do. I can do this and do this and do this. And then you find yourself deeper in the hole. I want to challenge you this morning to hear his call. And I want you to do like they do in the Westerns. My wife watches three episodes of Gunsmoke, <laughs> two episodes of The Cartwrights, <laughs> and then all of the Golden Girls she can host. <laughs> but in those Matt Dillon things, when Matt Dillon gets the bad guy backed into the corner, and Matt Dillon will have his gun out the six shooter that shoots eight shots, but he has it out and he, <laughs> and he says, come out, come out with your hands up. <laughs> and when you come out with your hands up, that means that I, I, I give it to you, God. I, I'm tired of trying to do it myself, God, I, I surrender. Amen. I give it to you. Now maybe you've got some stuff you've been thinking about and praying about and wrestling with. I dare you give it to him. I dare you just reach your hands up in the air. And listen, listen, don't worry about what people think. Don't worry about what people say. Because watch this. People talk about you anyway. It doesn't matter. And people can't send me to hell, nor can they send me to heaven. Right. But I want to get it right with God. Amen. So if by chance you're here, I'm going to invite you to stand. And we're going to sing this hymn, I Surrender All. And as you stand, and if by chance God is speaking to you, you may come and surrender your life to him. Or if he's speaking to you and he's just saying, well, I need to talk to God. I'll invite you to come and you can talk to him at the altar. Or if you want to come and be a part of our church, we'd love for you to come as well. Oh, oh. You may come. Come, maybe you want to say, God, I'm surrendering this. Would you like to come? Anybody else want to come? Just say, I surrender. And you can surrender it right where you are too, you know. You don't have to come here to surrender. You can surrender it right where you're standing. And say, God, I'm giving it to you. I
So we have we have with us today um, Sierra, who is a freshman at North Carolina Central, right? And her prayer is, she said, I just need new friends. I need new friends. And watch, that's the start of being created new. Okay. And, and, and to be honest with you, sometimes we have to just drop some of that baggage. Sometimes you'll, you'll learn, you learn in life that um, everybody can't go with you where you go. Yeah, yeah. And the thing that God has in store for you, if you try to carry everybody with you, they're going to pull you down. Okay? So I'm glad you came to them. Keyshawn. Keyshawn. Keyshawn comes and says, I just come and ask God to still keep me in his hand. And I said to him, I said, listen, dude. I ain't say dude because that's too cool. But I said, listen, the reason you're standing here is because God has you in his hand. And what I love about God is that he never takes his hand from us. Right. Never, never, never. Amen. And so his brother came as well just to pray. And he came and said, I came and prayed for my mama. And sick with his mama. And then mama's come because she's praying for them. And have you ever noticed, mama, that the older they get, the more you pray? Yeah. Anybody, any witnesses in there? Any witnesses? Because when they were his size, it wasn't no big deal. But now they get another stuff. And Daphne's come and stand with him. And then my brother says he's come because he wanted more. And he was with us last Sunday. And we pray to God. God bless you, man. So would you bow your heads? Let's pray for the James boys and the James girl. And we say to you, God, you've already been a keeper. Mm. That's why they're able to stand here today in this 21st day of year 2024. God, you, you have already kept them. And, and you didn't keep them for no reason. You kept them because you've got a plan for their lives. I mean, an awesome plan, gifts and graces and talent that you've given them. So God, use them for your glory. Help Tierra to have the strength and the guts to say to those that are pulling her back, um, I got to let you go. And I know it's hard, God, because we, we want people to like us and stuff. But yet, God, we understand that if I'm going to be what you want me to be, then some of the things that are happening in people that are in my life, I may have to just cut them loose. So, God, that's not just a prayer for Tierra. That's a prayer for some of us old folks as well. Amen. That we keep hanging around that person who... Every time they call us, they got gossip. And every time they text us, they got this to say and that to say. And every time they get around us, they run our blood pressure up. We might have to tell Uncle John, stop calling. Mm. So give us that strength. And then God, continue to bless our brother. Hold him in your hand. Thank you for his desire to come and just get more. To get more and more like you. Now God bless everybody under the sound of my voice. You know our needs. You know our desires. Hold us, God. Keep us in the palm of your hand, and may we do the things that bring honor and glory to you. In the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Chase wants to sing us a song. Here you go. All right. I thank God this morning for being here. I can identify with you. I can identify with Mr. Okay. Right. You ready? See what I'm going to do. I just want to be a blessing when God uses me. I want to sing. I want to sing. Amen. I am. I'm redeemed, I'm bought, I'm bought with a price. Jesus, he changed my life. Yeah. 
Anybody? 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 Ask you. Ask you. Ask you who I am. You can tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Where the devil's, devil's hate, now your love, your love, your love, your love abide. There's confusion, confusion, already, 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 already know. I, I, I'm walking, I'm walking with my Savior. I'm a, I'm a child, I'm just a child of the King. You can tell me, tell 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 me that I am. Aren't you glad that Ronnie stopped by? Anybody glad that he stopped by? And really, let him know. Let him know, man. Because had not been but for the grace of God, his story could be my story. Amen. All right. Come on. 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 Come on.
just who I am. Tell them, tell them, I am So as we end this day of worship, we're in it like we began, remember? We brought light into the sanctuary. So we bow to the cross. And we lit two candles. The candle on the right represents Jesus who came in human form. We put that candle out, symbolizing that God was dismissing you from this place. And the candle on the left represents Jesus who came as the only begotten Son of God. But you notice before he extinguishes the candle, he lights his candle lighter. Because the symbol says, no, God, before I leave this place, I'm dismissing you from this place, I take you with me. That I might let my light so shine that men might see my good works and glorify my Father who is in heaven. Did he not do a good job? Yes, sir. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Please note that um, on your way out, there are still some Christmas cards in the, in the fellowship hall. And also, we have in the fellowship hall some fruit. We had a men's conference yesterday, and there were a lot of fruit left and stuff. So we got some fruit in the fellowship hall. If you want to go by and get some, you're welcome to get some. Okay. And now unto him who's able. He's able to keep you from falling. And he is able to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. I hope that you notice on the uh, screen that the second Sunday of February is our wear your jersey shirt. So we invite you to wear your favorite jersey on the Super Bowl Sunday. Having now ended the worship, depart and serve. God bless you. What about them cowboys? Yeah.